If you would all stand with me for the reading of the word, I would like to, before we get into the word today, just let you know what this message is not. And it will tell you what the message is by telling you what it is not. We have altars today. If you need to repent of your sins, I would say run, don't walk to repent of your sins. We've got altars here today, and they're always open. So at any time, if you need to repent of your sins, this is a soul-saving station. Please come and repent. If you need to be baptized today, raise your hand or just come talk with me. Let me know. We'll baptize you today. In Jesus' name, for the remission of those sins that you just repented of, that you just turned away from. And then he promised that he would give you the gift of the Holy Ghost. But I'm not preaching about any of those things today. This is not, this is an unusual message, I would say that. But it is not about those things. If you need those things, then you need to, let's take care of those things. We're always here to do those things. But that is not what the message is about today. It's not about your addictions. It's not about even the, your afflictions. If you need to be healed, I believe that several people, I have he, felt a healing flow from the throne of God already this morning. If you need to be healed, let's get down here and let's take care of that. The Lord has provided that for us. And it wasn't free. It was, he took the 39 stripes on his back for our healing so that we would be healed. So if you need healing, come and get that taken care of. But that is not what I'm, I'm not here to talk about addictions, afflictions. I'm not here to talk about any of those things. I believe that God wants to take his church, his church to a higher level. Jeremiah chapter 12, verse one says, Righteous art thou, O Lord, Jeremiah speaking. And this is a conversation between God and Jeremiah. It's hard to tell sometimes when Jeremiah stops talking and God starts talking. But, you know, I noticed one thing about it. Jeremiah shuts up long enough to listen and write it down. It said, Righteous art thou, O Lord, when I plead with you, yet let me walk with you in your judgments. Wherefore doth the, de the way of the wicked prosper? In other words, he's saying, why is it that the wicked are prospering? Wherefore are all they happy that deal treacherously with me? Everybody who's mean and bad to me is happy. How is that, O oh Lord? Why don't you let me walk with you in your judgment? You have planted them. Yes, they have taken root. They grow. Yes, they bring forth fruit. Thou art near in their mouth and far from their reins. But you, O oh Lord, you know me. You've seen me and tried my heart towards you. Pull them out like sheep for the slaughter and prepare them for the day of slaughter. How long shall the land mourn and the herbs of every field wither for the wickedness of them that dwell therein? The beast and the birds are consumed and the birds because they said they shall never see their last end. And that was Jeremiah talking. Now God's going to talk a while. God's answer is, if you have run with the footmen and they have wearied you, then how can you contend with the horses? And if the land of peace wherein you trusted, they wearied you, then how wilt thou do in the swelling of the Jordan? For even your brethren in the house of, the, of your father, even they have dealt treacherously with you. Yes, they have called a multitude after you. Don't believe them. 
Though they speak fair words unto you, I have forsaken mine house. I have left mine heritage. I have given the dearly beloved of my soul into the hand of their enemies. Mine heritage is unto me as a lion in the forest. It cries out against me. Therefore have I hated it. Mine heritage is unto me as a speckled bird. And the birds run around about or against her. Come ye assemble all ye beasts of the field. Come to devour. Many pastors have destroyed my vineyard. Woo. They've trodden my portion underfoot. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. They have made it desolate, and being desolate, it mourneth unto me. The whole land is made desolate, because no man layeth it to heart. You may be seated. One thing that stands out to me in that passage, and I'm not preaching about that necessarily, maybe I am, is that it says that the pastors, the religious leaders, they have caused the downfall of the land, that basically they have caused the inheritance of the Lord to turn against him. And that which is blessed has become cursed. And what that that God had loved, he now hates. But he said something to Jeremiah, and, and, and it almost seems like in a condescending way. But he said, Jeremiah, if you can't contend with the footmen, if you can't contend with these people that are persecuting you, and the people that you see, that you believe, that are around you, that appear to be doing so well, whenever you are being persecuted, if you can't run with the footmen, how do you intend to contend with the horses? I don't know, and don't raise your hand, please. If you've ever been to Oaklawn and watched the horses, don't raise your hand. Just to be on the record, I've never done that. I went to Oaklawn Park and the Boy Scouts, but I've never been there during race season. So there you go. Innocent. I do watch the Kentucky Derby on TV, though. <laughs> and the Belmont Stakes and the, the Triple Crown. I, I typically will catch up on that. I don't bet on it, <laughs> but... I do from time to time watch the horses race because I love to see them run. And they are so majestic. And these, these horses, and, and I'm afraid of horses. My wife is an expert with horses. I, am, uh, I learned how to do a few things uh, with horses from her mother and from her. But I'm tip anything that's big enough to kill me, I'm typically, no, I'm good. Um, but... The, even an average horse, if you've ever walked up, how many of you have ever just walked up beside an average horse? An average horse, not the thoroughbreds, but an average horse is just bristling with muscle. They're huge animals and they're all, they seem like they're all muscle. There's not a pudgy, I've never seen a pudgy horse. They're just, they're massive muscular beasts and they're fast. The, the, the fastest man in the world could not outrun an average horse. It's an impossibility that a man can run with the horses. It's an impossibility. If you put, how many of you have ever been in the stands, don't raise your hand, at Oaklawn and thought, man, I think I can take them. Come on. I'll get my running shoes on. Come on. Come on. They're, they're in all those thoroughbreds are in there in those little shoots and they're going, oh, son, they just can't wait to get out. They're kicking to get out of the door. Come on, man. I think I can take you. You're crazy. That's impossible. And Jeremiah, we cannot downplay what Jeremiah was going through. If you read about him in his life, he was persecuted most of his ministry for what he said. Now, I want to say that again. 
not for what he believed, you will likely not ever be persecuted for what you believe. You can believe quietly whatever you want, no one will ever know. But that's not what Jeremiah was called to do. Jeremiah was called, the words were placed in his mouth by God Almighty to call out the sins of idolatry specifically because the, the nation was now, had turned to Baal worship. And it was, it was his job, it was God had called him as their prophet to say, this is wrong. You are sinning, you are cursing God by what you're doing. And he was very unpopular. If you want to be popular, this is probably not the right book for you. Now you can believe it, that'll get you in no trouble. That'll just totally keep you out of trouble. But it's whenever you start speaking. Whenever it gets down in your heart and in your soul and it, it builds up and it, you can't help it but coming out, that's whenever it gets you in trouble. Whenever, wherever you go, you're talking about the righteousness of God, not your own self-righteousness, but the righteousness of God. Whenever, wherever you go, you're telling people this truth, unabashedly, unashamedly telling people this truth. That's what will get you in trouble. He was called the weeping prophet for a reason. And a lot of the reason, yes, he was weeping for the people, for the nation, but he was weeping for Jeremiah because of what the people were putting him through. He was calling Israel to repentance. He was pointing out the sins that they were committing. He was prophesying about the calamity that would come if they did not change their ways. They were burning their children in sacrifice to false gods. It always comes down to the children, doesn't it? The enemy always wants the children. Thank God for you Sunday school teachers. Amen. You can never underestimate the power of an anointed, concerned Sunday school class. If you don't bring, if you don't come to a Sunday school class or a, a small group or bring your family, you need to do that. You need to do that. It may very well be the difference. It may very well be the difference in their lives. That was a commercial. But Jeremiah's troubles. You know, it, just, it almost seems like God was downplaying his troubles. But they were very real. They were very real. People were mocking him. How many of you love to be mocked? How many of you, when you walk down the street, love it when people are standing on the street corner mocking you? I've had that happen quite a bit in the last couple years. How many of them, how many of you love it when they, someone beats you up and arrests you, how many of you like that? Well, you're crazy too. If you like being beat up and arrested, if you like ridicule, people lying about you, saying things that are not true about you, but also maybe saying some, some things that are true about you. Because you know what? Jeremiah had faults just like everybody else. Ridiculing him. He lived this life. As a matter of fact, the Lord said, you know what? Your life is going to be so challenging that I am, I'm going to command you not to even get married. Because your life is going to be so hard. You're going to have so many challenges. There's going to be also the things that are coming to the nation are going to be so difficult that you shouldn't even get married. I'm really glad that God never required that of me. I wouldn't know I would be in the same lamenting shoes. <laughs> I'd be writing the second book of Lamentations. 
without my wife. But that's where we find Jeremiah in chapter 12. We find the prophet having this conversation with God. He's saying, the wicked, they're prospering while I'm not. He's saying, they're happy while I'm getting beat up and ridiculed and cut down by people. They do bad things to me, yet they look as if they are blessed. And they have taken over. And in good old uh, uh, Arkansas ling- lingo, he was asking God, how long are you going to let this continue? He said, why can't you let me be with you in your judgment? I see all this going on. And how many of you see all of the wickedness and injustice going on in the world? It is rampant. Our, our streets are filled with drugs and crime. This nation is in decline. It's not in decline. This nation has eroded. Our leaders are corrupt and inept. Our money loses more value every day, but wages never rise. Truth preachers become hated. While those pastors who tickle the ears of people become rich and famous. Our world and our nation are in dire distress. There are troubles on every hand. When will it get better? We here living in Bryan, Arkansas, or in Saline County, Arkansas, we see all this going on. We see people overseas being martyred for the sake of Christ. We see a tribulation for people across the country and in other nations who have to hide and we feel safe in our little bubble and I don't mean to scare you today that's not the uh, intent well I will tell you this and it's unpopular to say it but that lion is at the door the same calamities that Jeremiah prophesied if a nation turns its back on the Lord if a nation that has been purified by the Lord that was built upon the principles of the Lord turn on those principles and many of you are sitting here wishing I'd shut up Jeremiah chapter 20 the governor And the chief priest had just had him locked up and beaten up, put in shackles because of his prophecy against the land. And Jeremiah himself laments having to give this word of God. Let's read it in chapter 20, verse 7. It says, this is Jeremiah speaking. says, O Lord, you've deceived me. And I was deceived. You're stronger than I and have prevailed. I am in derision daily, everyone mocking me. For since I spoke, I cried out, I cried violence and spoil because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me and a derision daily. Then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay. I went through so much because I would not shut up that I decided that I was going to shut up. I went through so much for the sake of the gospel for the prophesying of the words that God put in my own mouth that I decided that I was not going to say those words, not anymore. And that I was not even going to say anything in his name anymore. I quit. I'm done. 
I'm not, I'm, it's put me through so much that I quit. I'm done. I can't take it anymore. And then he said, oh, but it is like fire shut up in my bones. I can't shut up. I can't quit. I can't walk away. This world wants to shut us up. There is no place in genteel society anymore for us. No place for the unabashed, unashamed word of God, including his judgments. You can mention his love and his grace and his kindness, but judgment will never come. Just shh, preacher, we don't want to hear about judgment. We don't want to hear about calamity and condemnation. Shh. You just preach to us about love, joy, peace. Shut up. I can't shut up. It's like fire shut up in my bones. That's how we must be. If the word of God is just whispered behind closed doors, you want to know where the victory is? You want to know where the victory is? The victory, and we all have things to deal with. You may not be mocked and spat upon you may not be arrested and beaten and then again you may i've been personally threatened for saying the truth for speaking the truth i have been mocked i have been derided i have been threatened for doing nothing other than just speaking the truth in love But the world wants to shut you up. It wants to tap you down. It wants to say, you can do whatever you want to for now, anyway, in church. Until we have another virus or whatever, and then we'll shut you down. But you can do whatever you want to in church. But you know, here we've got a separation of church and state. So in other words, don't you come out of that church talking about any of that stuff. You just keep it there. That's where it belongs. It doesn't belong anywhere else. Jer- Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 11 says, But the Lord is with me as a mighty and terrible one. Therefore, my persecutors shall stumble, and they shall not prevail. They shall be greatly ashamed, for they shall not prosper. Their everlasting confusion shall never be forgotten. And if I'll tell you what, if you don't believe this world is completely confused, you need to look around a little bit. And it's never going to change until somebody proclaims unabashedly the word of God that says, you know what, there really is a heaven and there really is a hell. And I don't want you to go there. I want you to turn around. We've got to point out Not the sinner, but the sin. Say, if we don't change our ways. I'm going to go back to the victory. Where the victory is, is proclaiming what God has already done. You know, he's already paid for your healing. You proclaim it and you will receive it. He he has already paid for your salvation. If you'll be obedient, you will receive that. With God, he wants us, even after everything that Jeremiah had done, even after everything that Jeremiah had gone through personally, For God's sake, God spoke to him and he said something. I want to take you, and you can take it negatively, 
He said, hey, if you can't run with the footman, how are you ever going to do what I called you to do? I called you to not run with the footman. I called you to do the impossible. I called you to run with the horses. Does anybody get that? He didn't call us to do the possible. Hey, the doctor can do the possible. He didn't, he didn't call us to do the possible. The, the physicians, the psychiatrists can do the possible. He didn't call us, you know, the, to do the possible. Our politicians can do the possible. He didn't call us to run with the footman. He said, Jeremiah, I'm preparing you to do things that you could never imagine. I'm preparing you to do things that men can't do. I'm preparing you to run with the horses. If you believe these following statements, I want you to raise your hand and say amen. amen. Good. Just like that. With God, if he is with you, all things are possible. Amen. Greater is he that is within you than he that is in the world. Amen. All things are possible to those who believe. If God be for us, who can be against us? If you really believe that, if you truly believe that, there is no footman, no horse, nor any weapon formed against you shall prosper. Amen? What we endure day to day for his namesake is preparing us to run with the horses. He is calling his church like I said, this is not a message necessarily for sinners. This is a message for the saints. He is calling us to get past ourselves. He is calling us into a higher level, into a deeper walk, into a higher walk to where we are able to run with the horses, to do the impossible things. So when it seems like all hope is gone, when all the chips are down, when everything is going wrong, declare victory over the impossible. For the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. It may seem like the devil's in charge. At the day of Jeremiah, he was like, look at him. All of these wicked people, they're in charge. Let me tell you something. All the wicked people that seem to be in charge of our world, they're not in charge. Our God puts up kings and he pulls them down. Never doubt this. Never doubt this. No matter what is going on in your world personally or in our world internationally, the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. And if things are going poorly in your life, if things are going bad in your life, and, and I know that they are in a lot of your lives, I know the, the intricacies going on in many of your lives. If you will proclaim victory, if you will speak it, that word that is, has been shut up like fire in your bones, if you will speak that word, if you will proclaim the victory, that's where the victory lies, in speaking it. Please stand with me, musicians, please come. Magicians, too. If you're watching online, that's a private joke. I know that we all battle things. We all battle our problems that either we caused or just happened. We all battle our own flesh daily. We all battle the devil and you can't underestimate that devil. 
He had you figured out before the day you were born. If you are living, and I want you to listen to me for a second, church. If you are living a less than victorious life, the victory is in the speaking the proclamation of His Word and His judgments, of His mercy, His grace, and His judgments. I want to proclaim it today. I want to run with the horses today. I want to beat the horses today. Are there any horse races on? Is it still racing season? Anybody know? You might just see me on the track. I won't have any betting tickets in my hand. I'll have some running shoes on. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. In verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of power may be of God and not of us. We're troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. I wrote in there, there's a little gap in my Bible. I put non-essential. That's what we were called during the pandemic. We're non-essential to the world, but we're so very essential to the world. If the world does not hear us proclaim it, where will they hear it? Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our bodies. Amen? Matter of fact, it doesn't say our bodies, it says our body. Because we are not bodies, we're one body. You want to win in this life? You want to be more than an overcomer? We're all going to have dire distress and dire hardship. The Lord is calling us to transcend the footman, to transcend our personal problems and our hang-ups, to transcend our afflictions and our addictions. God has made... He has made provision for all of that. He's asking us to transcend ourselves and what we are capable of doing. Stop running with the footman. It's time for the saints of God to run with the horses, to do those things that are impossible. Because nothing is impossible with our God. Amen. How many of you believe that? Say amen. Amen. Repeat after me. Nothing is impossible with my God. Nothing is impossible with my God. Nothing is impossible with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you today. We thank you today for all of the provisions that you have given us. We don't always understand this world or what we're going through, but we know that you have made a way for us. Not only have you made a way for us to survive it and to come through it, but you have made a way for us to become more than overcomers. You have endued us with power from on high so that we might become witnesses to this world. I pray, Lord God, that you would place your word in our hearts place it in our mouths let it be like fire shut up in our bones that we cannot contain but we take it to the highways and the byways and that we speak it with love and we compel them to come in that are dying in this lost and dying world in Jesus name Amen God bless you 
God bless you. You're dismissed. Enjoy this beautiful day.